Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy Scum Vermin Human, written by Hull's Kitchen Sink. I still remember when the humans invaded. It is not hard to remember, having happened a mere 20 cycles ago. I was unusual in that I survived the invasion, despite being a military officer, a lieutenant in logistics division of our empire. After seven days of war were done, I was the highest ranking military officer still alive. I was the one who signaled the surrender of our forces and bowed my species' head to the apes. They were a young species. Their first fitful, furred, breasted ancestors crawled between tree roots when my species last survived the turning. When we had brought ourselves back into the stars, there was still the flicker of fire and a dry savanna of cracked and brutalized world, one of the great casualties of the turning. No species in the galaxy had expected their world to ever produce another civilization. And in a way, I suppose they were right. As my species reached its zenith, they swept out, leaping from world to world, their limes short and flickering things, but in great numbers. They were given many epitaphs, verba, swarm, viruses, all representing a basic distaste of their kind amongst the great and the good species of the galaxy. They took it with good humor, the kind of good humor that is developed in a species constantly on the edge of violence, an instinctual politeness that avoids confrontation because confrontation is so frequently lethal amongst them. It only highlighted the uncanniness of their kind. When they came for us, it was a war of conquest, no doubt inspired by the desperate need for more resources to feed a culture that could not stop growing. They had ridden through the stars like a scythe. Our fleets were destroyed in surprise attacks without declarations of war. They had no sense of decency when it came to war, and it served them well. Within a matter of a few years, we were trapped on our home planet, and the invasion began. It was not just the fact that they had attacked that left us shocked. It was the speed at which they had advanced. Another testament to their barbarism, they had no sense of restraint when it came to developing new technology. They did the unthinkable without considering the consequences. They certainly doomed us with their impulsive conquest. We fought as well as we could, but we had no chance. We had been prepared to fight an entirely different kind of war. No civilized species would have considered conquest, empires, and such a grand scale, not in the face of the turning. But then, nobody had ever told the humans about the turning. I certainly wouldn't. While becoming the face of our surrender, I was vilified. My old name struck from our language, those who shared it, reviling it, denying it. I was the lowest of the low. So, Sulesan, I have always wondered about your name, said the human ambassador, the military governor of our world, of our species. I was the supposed civilian head of government for what it was worth. My duties were primarily to absorb abuse from the political system of my home world for my complicity in our servitude, in the taxes that we paid and the levies we raised. What does it mean? I always hear the others of your species calling me that too. Is it an honorific of some sort, leader or diplomat? I gave a tight smile. The humans communicated almost entirely through words and large expressive gestures. Massive, obvious behavior to remove as much ambiguity as possible from what they meant. When they wanted to avoid a fight, it was obvious. When they were seeking one, even more so. Warning signs like the bright colors on a poisonous animal or the foul stench hanging around a noxious prey. Another example of their lack of refinement. My kind had evolved to be far more subtle. Not that any of that would matter. The first signs of the turning were already upon us. A scant few months remained before my kind would vanish beneath the sands of histories, buried like so many dead species before us. But I could see the human still wanted an answer. It means human, I said. 
It is not a compliment. It is, in point of fact, a deadly insult amongst my kind. Human, scum, vermin, plague bearer, pariah, savage. You get the point. There was a moment of silence. The human looked askance to me. Everything all right. That's the most you've ever said about your species culture in one sitting. I've been holding my tongue. I need no longer do so. This isn't a rebellion, is it? He asked, sighing. We've had to put down a score of those in the last month, and the timing has been, uh, difficult. The disappearing scout ships, I said. Everything galactic west of this world, I wager. You will not hear back from them. No one ever does. The human gave me a sharp look. You know what calls this. Of course, I said. And you kept it a secret. Of course, I roared. I regretted it almost instantly. The human's eyes narrowed. Fists clenching as he fought the urge to murder me where I stood. When the deadly moment passed and he regained control of his hindbrain, he shook his head. What did you expect? I asked. Your kind have slaughtered us. The only escape we have available was destroyed in your damned conquest because you took it for a shield generator. The Daedalus Project, the human said, frowning. We've been studying it for the past ten years straight, but never figured out what it was. It walked like a shield generator. It quacked like one, but... The turning is coming and nothing survives it. We have legends about what it is, but that is all. It is a wavefront that passes constantly around the galaxy, slowly cycling across known space. What records survive its passing speak of impossible suffering, torture beyond words, the most nightmarish of fates. How distant... Distant ancestors created the escape for us. It projects a field of distorted time. The turning passes in a flash. The device cannot be recreated for more reasons than one. So, we are always aware that our empire must crumble for any of us to survive. Other species simply commit suicide, denying whatever forces behind the turning any satisfaction. Your world suffered that fate in a lost sapient species choosing to destroy its home and itself to deny the turning whatever its goals are. The point is that you cannot stop it, and now cannot even avoid it. You do not have the time. We will die, but so are you. The human was silent for a moment. His face red, and he breathed hard. Primitive instinct still so close to the skin that he was looking for a rock to throw or a tree to climb. He regained his control. I nodded. I understand. I left and we did not talk again for several weeks. Ships landed, great transport ships, in the humans' fortress subcontinent, as our stocks of resources were seized and aggregated within warehouses. We watched with grim satisfaction. They could take it all. It wouldn't make any difference. When are you leaving? I asked, sitting in the military governor's office. Leaving? he asked, an eyebrow raised. The transport ships have been moving constantly. It has been clear that you are evacuating and stripping the world of what resources you can. It won't help you. No matter how you try and fortify your Earth, it will fall. We're not leaving, Cilician, said the human. Of course, I said, allowing amused derision to enter my voice. I suppose you do not believe me. I do, actually. And one of our scout ships came back. No ship, no outpost escapes the turning. Ah, well... He looked back down at the map of the planet, showing population centers. Glad no one told us about that. The least you could do is have the decency to allow us to embrace our deaths without your boots on our necks. You know you have a very low opinion of humans. I suppose I can't blame you after the war. We play for keeps. The human took out a small wooden pipe, filled it with poisonous weed that they apparently found amusing to burn and inhale. He lit it and took a deep breath from the noxious fumes, before blowing them out in a foul cloud. But we didn't conquer all species to make you miserable, or kill you. We did it because we knew there was something nasty coming, no matter how you've tried to hide it, and we all need to face it together. If your leaders have been winning too, but then, I guess we were Cilician. Well done, I'm sure that as a sapient life is destroyed throughout the galaxy, we will thank you. My blood pounded in my ears, and, for a moment, I felt a strange and wholly unnatural desire to bite the human. I did not, but it thrilled me to feel the primitive impulse. I've seen how your kind treat each other. I've seen the very worst of humanity's excesses. There is a reason that you are Cilician. 
Yeah, we have our moments, don't we? We took another long, slow puff of the pipe. It's the pack instinct. If something's in your pack, you defend it against anything outside of the pack. If it's outside of your pack, well, anything goes. Fascinating, I said and sneered, turning away and leaving the office. The day came. It was obvious what it did. The human ships continued landing and taking off until the last minute. The shipments of materials continued to the fortress. I watched, detached and depressed. The sun began to dim, taking on an ominous blue haze. I sat and waited for the end to come, torturous, though it would surely be. Throughout the galaxy's history, countless ideas have been conjured up as to the nature of the turning. Nightmares about the event are common to every civilization that knows of it, but no one knows for sure. Some blame the great swarm of insectoid creatures, all gleaming carapaces and scything limbs, devouring the organic material of worlds. Others weave tales of mutated demonic creatures reminiscent of their own species, brought forth through the decadence and lack of faith in old gods. Still others blame spectral wraiths of energy and nebula gases, taking offense to simple organic life in their playground. A vast, sweeping tide of von Neumann machines, titanic artificial intelligences who loathe organic life, undead gods from other planes of existence come to wander through our reality like giants in a sandbox. A sweeping tide of madness, less entity, and more natural disaster, shredding sapiens slowly and torturously. I had always held a silent suspicion that the humans were responsible for the turning, or at least were its agents. Some savage species grown too fast, sweeping out, destroying civilization, collapsing under its own weight. I'd been wrong. Everyone was wrong. It was so much worse. As the nightmares descended upon us, there was a sound like tearing silk that filled the air. At first, I thought that it was some harmonic emerging from the screams of my kind, or some harbinger of the oncoming torment. Turned out, there was the humans. The gates tore open in every street, humans hustling out in thick shells designed to amplify their already barbaric strength and freakishly overcharged nervous systems. They met the nightmares with all the defiance that their ancestors had shown, screaming against the night with fire and flint in hand. A great deal more effectiveness, though. The battle stretched on, then the entirety of the Seven-Day War and its subsequent aftermath. Perhaps a few thousand humans had died in ambushes or vastly outnumbered. Each time, the retaliation had been draconian, devastating cities and killing hundreds for each one that died. The humans had not lost their retaliatory zeal. Hundreds of thousands died fighting the nightmares in the city alone. But they kept flooding out of their gates. Then after an indeterminable period, the hype bears fell back. Their own horrific ranks diminished. Well, the human said. Douglas, I recalled, was the name he'd always asked me to use with him. He stood against the wall, removing a helmet, slicked with gore, both human and nightmare. That went better than expected. They'll be back, I said, voice shaking. Oh, I look forward to it. This will happen across a thousand inhabited worlds, tens of thousands. You have lost countless numbers of your own people. Why? I asked, more accusation than was strictly justified, tinting my voice. Why? He asked, giving me a quizzical look. Because we protect our own Cilician. He slapped me once on the back, just gently enough to sting rather than shove my spine through my stomach. Welcome to the pack. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan 95, Pudic Yol, Meridian 117, Elithia, Jordan Buxborn, Angry Marine, Albarden Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.